Alright guys, so in this video I'm going to be telling you how to improve your fitness or get your fitness up to the required standards so you can complete phase basic training, your army training, okay, to a good level. If you want to get those best PT awards, which is the, the fittest guy in the troop award, then you really need to work on your, on your fitness. Um, the mistake I made when I was training, I did four months worth of fitness training before I went into phase one training and I've just recently finished phase one training. And the mistake I made is that I did the wrong training. I was going swimming um, every day and the reason I did this because I knew that there were swimming lessons in the army, um, swimming classes, and I wanted to improve my, my swimming. Um, the swimming lessons in the army are not that important. I was probably one of the best swimmers um, in my troop, um, maybe the best, I don't know, but it wasn't that important. You were not really judged on your swimming. The main thing you were judged on was endurance running. That was the main thing. Um, and running with weight. So we're going to the endurance running and then running with weight. So in the endurance running, the army starts off slow and builds up. It goes no more than six miles uh, when you're going on endurance runs and it starts off at about three miles. So make sure when you're training, you're doing seven mile, between seven and eight miles of training at least twice a week because you want to be able to run a little bit further than what you're going to be doing in the army. You don't want to be hanging out at the back. So many times when I was going on endurance runs, there were people hanging out at the back, literally just caving in, being sick, their fitness was crap. There was a car um, that used to follow us and if you got injured or you couldn't carry on, you'd get in the car. And we called it the jack wagon. Um, basically with people that were just crap at fitness. And I, thankfully I've never got in this in this car, but you just see the people's face when they got in there. It was just embarrassment and shame. And you can imagine everyone's running and you're there having to get in this car because you're crap at fitness. Um, so make sure you work on your endurance running because you're going to be doing a lot of running, at least twice a week. Um, now, the, mid, the problem I have is I'm from a, a city, so when I go running it's on the pavements, you know, in a nice park. When you go running in the army, it's in the woods, okay, on tracks and uh, when it rains and the water is knee deep, you're going through that muddy water. If you fall in it, they're going to say get back up. So I couldn't really prepare for that, but if you can go running on terrain that's not very even, um, if you live in the countryside, go and do that. Um, if you can get out of your city once a week and go and run somewhere where the terrain's a little bit rough, um, where it's muddy, boggy, go and do that. Uh, just make sure you don't get injured. Um, but um, that's where you're mainly going to be going running. Uh, you're not going to be running on a nice smooth surface. Uh, that's not how the army works. The next part, which I mentioned earlier, is running with weight. Um, in the army, you're going to be required to do TABS, which is Tactical Advanced to Battle, which is when you're basically, um, it's as if you're in a, in a combat scenario, so you're wearing all your combat gear and you're marching or progressing towards a battle. Um, so it's going to require fast walk and it's going to require running to get there uh, to help your comrades who maybe are losing the battle when they need your support. So what the army does, they say, you have to wear your body armor, you have to wear your helmet, you have to wear your webbing, um, and you have to you have to carry your rifle, and you have to wear a bag on your back called a bergen, um, which usually has got about 15 kilos in the back. Depends on what trade you're going for. Um, if you're going for like a combat trade, it's 15 kilos. Uh, if you're going for a non-combat trade, it's usually about 10 kilos. But that's just in the bag. Your body armor, your helmet, and your rifle. You're looking at carrying about 20 odd kilos, um, and it can be quite awkward because you have to carry your rifle like this with two hands, so it really ties out the biceps. Um, <laughs> you don't run, you, a tab, you do a test at the end, I think week 11 of training, which is six miles, but you're not running the full six miles in gear. You're marching for about a mile and then you're running for about a quarter of a mile. Um, and then you're marching, but when you're marching, you're marching fast, it's a fast pace. Um, you have to do six miles, I think in an hour and 45 minutes. Um, so, you know, However fast it is, I can't be able to work it out how many, uh, how many minutes per mile that is. Um, it's probably about 20 minutes a mile or something like that, just over. Um, so you can imagine with all that weight, on the terrain that's pretty rough, it's not a smooth terrain, it's in the woods. So you, you're going through puddles, you're going through rocky surfaces, uneven surfaces, it's quite hard. So make sure you get a bag on your back if you're training to go in the army. <coughs> Uh, put, don't put 20 kilos in, in, in your bag straight away, start off small and work your way up. Um, <coughs> and go marching for a mile at a fast pace or walk very fast and then run about 250 meters um, and then march again 
uh, for another mile without stopping and then run for 250 meters um, and then take a, wa a water break every two and a half miles that's what we usually do in the army uh, it's literally about a minute water break you get the water you swig it down back in your bag and then you're off again um, but those water breaks felt like heaven I'll tell you that now um, yeah so make sure that's how you can prepare really uh, for fitness um, don't worry about going to the gym and bulking up and being the biggest guy there strength is not that big a thing in the army yes you need to carry weight on your back um, sometimes you're carrying a lot of weight when you're going on exercise which is when you're having to survive in the, in, the, in the field as if you're on, in, as if you're in battle so you have to survive in the woods for about three nights or four nights depending on which one you're doing um, you have to carry all of your equipment in a big bag which can get very heavy it can weigh about 40 or 50 kilos uh, especially if it rains um, so it, it just weighs down with water um, so yeah you need to if your body strength is crap then you need to improve that so um, you know do shoulder exercises do press ups do um, pull ups um, but I wouldn't worry about doing things like bicep curls um, and working on, you know, your six pack or something. You know, just focus on core strength. So doing the plank, uh, doing pull ups, doing um, press ups. Um, you know, e even any exercise, just shoulder uh, shoulder presses um, or bench press um, to improve your shoulder muscles. Um, because that's mainly the muscle you'd be using shoulder and your legs, your thighs, doing squats or lunges, etc. Um, that's the main kind of muscles you need to work on there. Um, of course, you need to work on your press ups. Um, you need to do 44 press ups in two minutes and 50 sit ups in two minutes um, to pass your army fitness test, along with running a 1.5 mile or 2.5 kilometer uh, run in under 10 minutes 30. Um, so that's really the fitness that you need to improve on.